This is Twit. You guys had an article from Peace Spur this week, Core 9 9900 KS, Ryan's Kentucky Special. Uh, um, <laughs> K-Series, of course, means it's unlocked. What does Do we know what the S actually means, or are we just going to name I'm, it the uh, K-Shrout? <laughs> I, I've been calling it the Kentucky Shrout since it was released, or since they announced it. They announced this way back at Computex, I think it was the first time we heard about it publicly. Right. So we've been waiting since March to get hands-on with this thing. And I assume the S stands for special edition or maybe S for mm -hmm. speed. It's funny, though, because they have all of these letters at the end of products like the F letter means that it has no graphics, of course. Uh, I don't know why F, but anyhow, F this is graphics. This is a yeah, F foregoing graphics. <laughs> this this literally is the KS, if you're not familiar with it, is basically a pre-binned, pre-overclocked, very, very special version of the 9900K, the i9 right. processor that's already been out for months now. And they've set up these CPUs to run at a minimal frequency, a, a base frequency of 4 gigahertz, which is 400 megahertz faster than the i9 9900K. So you're just getting a free overclock out of the box. But then when it turbo boosts, the turbo boost behavior is different than it is with the regular K. And that's the big deal with this. They're talking about 5 gigahertz, all cores all the time. And that's because with the 9900K, it would turbo boost up to 5 gigahertz on up to two cores. Once you start doing something that takes all of the CPU cores or more than two, mm -hmm. it starts to clock down. You get down to the 4.8s, the 4.6s. So you never see 5 gigahertz on all cores unless you were to manually overclock or run your motherboard's auto overclocking utility. I actually did that with a 9900K and it took the voltage all the way up to I think 1.35 volts to give me 5 gigahertz on all cores all the time. So that's not ideal. The advantage of this product from Intel is it's been pre-selected to overclock without requiring a lot of extra voltage. So these are in that 1.25 volts range and they don't consume a tremendous amount of power compared to the K. But, you know, we, we talked about that in the review. The reviews that are out there will have the, the actual comparison of, of the wattage this requires. And this is, this is a processor that ships without a factory cooler. Intel absolutely recommends you put a good cooler on this. I recommend something with at least like a 250-watt uh, cooling rating. Not every cooler actually puts a rating on. I know Be Quiet does with their Dark Rock Pro 4. They say it'll do 250 watts. That's what I used for this review, but like a, a 240 millimeter all-in-one cooler or the like. But Patrick, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at any benchmarks or anything yet with this, but what would your guess be if you took a 9900K and then you boosted all the cores to 5 gigahertz under load, all <laughs> other things being equal, you think this is going to beat out uh, Ryzen 9 3900X? One would hope, but I think uh, I think Tom's hardware actually has an answer. I'm going to say, just to be contrarian, that it won't. Just to annoy the snot out of the Kentucky Special or yeah, its overseer. I, I, did a, <laughs> I did a bunch of CPU benchmarks, and it's pretty much the same story we saw before, where... Mm -hmm. Most of these benchmarks are multi-thread aware, in fact, all of them, and you're going to get better numbers, lower render times with the extra cores and threads of the Ryzen 9, even though the clock speeds are lower than this product. Where Intel would like to showcase this product is things like gaming and anything that takes advantage of higher single-threaded performance, those higher instructions per clock that they can, they can boast about because not only do they have a good you know, solid architecture, but they're running it at a faster speed. And Zen 2 is very close in instructions per clock, the actual IPC performance of the current generation Intel parts. That was the big news about Zen 2, the new core in AMD's products. But, right. You know, Intel can build up on their IPC lead with faster clocks, obviously. But uh, just the CPU benchmarks I've run so far, and I'm working on gaming currently, uh, just kind of show the same picture. The the KS is faster. Everything identical in the system except for upgrading that CPU. You do get 
slightly better render times, you get better performance in video encoding. But we're talking about, you know, like 10, 20, 30 seconds here and there in a benchmark. That actually translates into a lot more savings long term, bigger rendering jobs, bigger encoding jobs. So it, it's definitely there. It's noticeable. It's a significant improvement. It's not the massive jump in power consumption that I would have expected just from overclocking a K myself. This KS in my testing, it rose oh, some 50-ish, 50 54 watts under full load. This is center bench, all cores benchmark, and that was the peak observed wattage from the wall. So it's that's not actually what the CPU itself is pulling. I'm sure that's still under 200 watts. There's a lot of overhead to account for the fact that it's an 80 plus gold power supply. It's only about 90 some percent of the power from the walls even going to the system to start with. So when you look at those numbers, it's always a little misleading. But I mean, look at the core or the Ryzen 9 at 209 watts. That's the most it ever drew from the wall during a punishing multi-core benchmark. So they do have a big lead in power consumption, AMD does, with their 7 nanometer process tech. And this KS, it's still built on the same 14 nanometer process as all of their other current desktop parts. And that's not changing probably anytime soon, at least not until next year. So if power is your biggest concern, and actually really if multi-threaded performance is your biggest concern, AMD still has the win. And I think Tom's their summary of the performance of this as well, because they've gone through and done all the gaming benchmarks. It's it's not going to be a huge game changing experience compared to the 9900K. We've already seen results with that CPU all over the place from the Ryzen launch on and comparisons between the 9900K, which is about a five hundred dollar parts currently selling for about four eighty five. I've seen it as low, I think, as four fifty at Micro Center now with the launch of this new part. Right. And uh, that was the other thing about this. The the new KS, which is a special edition part, I assume will be rather limited availability, but not a giant premium for something that is essentially a very highly binned pre-overclocked part. The recommended customer price is between 513 and 524. That is 1,000 quantity purchases by i'm sure like a system integrator if you go out and look for it on retail sites like amazon if you're looking at newegg i think newegg had it listed yesterday for 569.99 micro center i think has had it for around 550 to 570 as well so not a huge jump uh i would have guessed this to be at least 600 dollars. so they're they're a little below that and you know, you're getting something that is probably not going to be available forever. So, <laughs> and I imagine that once availability drops, then we're going to see those prices climb, just like we did with the 3900X, which is still one of those things where you have to catch it when it's in stock to grab it for that 499 MSRP, and then mm -hmm. everybody else pumps it up to like six or seven hundred dollars. So, in in the realm of Five to six hundred dollar processors. I think the KS just increases Intel's lead a little bit for single thread performance and gaming, but it really depends on what you want to use your CPU for, what you want to use your system for. You know, it seems like uh, you know, I, I it seems a little underwhelming to be honest with you. Uh, at least it's 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 I'll say flat out, it's kind of pointless if you're not going to overclock. Um, it's kind of crazy, right? The 3900X is fairly commonly available on and on Amazon at this point. Uh, you know, it's got a healthy lead over Amazon, um, over Amazon, over AMD's Ryzen 9 3900X, but it's not, um, it's not as huge as you'd like, and it kind of, you know, like you said, it kind of falls apart when you get into some fairly serious multi-threaded work. Um, I mean, is this theme thin to you? It seems. It, it seems like a, a a lot of sound and fury signifying not a whole lot. Uh, is that an unfair categorization of this? Do you feel it's, you know, uh, eh, I'm just, I'm not as excited Any, as I'd like to be about this part. Yeah, anytime they come out with something that's going to, it sounded more impressive leading up to the launch for sure. I can right. I can understand 
thinking this is a bit underwhelming because then you look at benchmarks and they're still behind a part that has more cores and threads. So anything multi-thread optimized is still going to go AMD's way. I think mm -hmm. it's going to get really interesting once the Core X series parts are available because that's where they've been really aggressive with core counts, clocks, and pricing relative to their previous generation of high-end desktop parts. So when we get into the 12 core, 24 thread Intel performance at higher clock frequencies than AMD, then I think it's going to get really interesting. But then those are also more expensive parts than this. So this is like a $570 right. desktop part, which is, I'm sure their target is the ultimate gaming CPU. So, uh, you know, the 10, Plus it's 980 special X. <laughs> right. It's special edition has special packaging. Now, uh, reviewers received this fancy, uh, it looks like a gift box, which has a uh, fabric pull tab, uh, a sat sort of a satin fabric pull tab here, uh, bonded paper, a satin finished bonded paper over the box. I'm being a little facetious, but, you know, inside we have the, um, <laughs> what do they call this shape? It's it's hexagonal. It's like a something dodecahedron. Dodecahedron. Okay. So, the, you Sounds know, the, the fancy packaging in here, if the camera would actually focus on it. And, you know, they even included a little bag. So if I wanted to carry this uh, fancy processor around with me, I guess I could put it in this fabric bag with the Intel logo on it. But, uh, you know, some of that price has to be that, that fancy box, right? At least a $5, <laughs> I would say. It does not come with a cooler. As big as the packaging is, there's no cooler in there because you would not There's want no to cooler. use a small air cooler with this. <laughs> now, AMD ships a cooler with everything, so that if if that matters to you, that saves you a little bit more money. I, I really think traditionally AMD was always sort of the value choice, and that's still the case. Intel is making right. a case for we have absolutely the best single threaded performance on desktop right now because we have five gigahertz, and you know, AMD cannot say that. But there's just there's no arguing with core count and even a four gigahertz core if you have 12 of them is going to be faster than a five gigahertz core if you only have eight of them so and i say core i guess i mean cpu i should probably stop talking now i've had very little sleep the last two nights <laughs> well in the near future you can expect actual real world gaming benchmarks on the 9900 ks very curious to see what the story is that because one of the things we've noticed with certain hardware their artificial benchmarks tend to make a much bigger deal of the performance improvements or the performance claims when the real world actual game based benchmarks are maybe be a touch thinner so keep tuned to pcpro.com for the updates on that um and again as as as, as sebastian mentioned that Core i9 is currently selling for $613.75, and the now relatively commonly available 3900X is down around $500. Uh, if you're doing video editing, if you are doing professional work, if you're using massive applications that use all the cores, or if you're running a ton of stuff simultaneously, um, then we'd probably still steer you towards the Ryzen.